Glycogen storage disease, or GSD, is an umbrella term for a cluster of diseases involving a dysfunction in one or more of the enzymes that regulate the metabolism of glycogen. There are 12 different types of GSD. Some affect the ability to store glycogen, some cause the inability to break it down. They vary in treatment and mechanism, so we're just going to talk about the most common type, type 1. There are two categories of GSD, 1, type A, and type B. We're going into detail about A, also known as hepatorenal glycogen storage disease. The incidence rate of GSD-1 is 1 in 100,000 individuals of the general population. However, 1 in 20,000 Ashkenazi Jews. Prevalence rates are also higher in Mexican, Chinese, and Japanese populations. In the U.S., GSD-1 accounts for about 25% of all cases. In addition, GSD-1A accounts for 80% of GSD-1 cases, which makes it far more common than the GSD-1B. This condition is inherited, so the primary risk factor for GSD is having a family member with the disease. It is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern, which means both copies of the gene in each cell have mutations. The parents of an individual with an autosomal recessive condition each carry one copy of the mutated gene, but they typically do not show signs and symptoms of the condition. Life expectancy and quality of life is reduced, but many people are able to do quite well. In glycogen storage disease type 1a, there are five major manifestations, hypoglycemia, enlargement of the liver, and excess lactic acid, lipids, and uric acid in the blood. Type 1 GSD patients have a deficiency in the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme in the kidneys, liver, and other organs. This means that while they are able to store glucose as glycogen, they are not able to release it. Normally, as blood glucose drops between meals, the body breaks down glycogen to glucose to maintain blood sugar. These patients cannot access their glycogen storage and rely on a constant intake of glucose, even at night. Because patients cannot access their glycogen storage, the main goal of MNT is to slow the absorption of glucose in the bloodstream as much as possible to limit spikes in blood sugar, which trigger glycogen storage. To combat the inability to release glucogen from storage, 1 to 2 grams of raw cornstarch per kilogram body weight per dose is consumed on a consistent basis to maintain blood glucose levels. That's about two-thirds cup of cornstarch every three to six hours, including nocturnally, for a 120-pound patient. The monitoring and evaluation for hypoglycemia consists of checking the patient's food diary for foods that slow the absorption of nutrients and blood glucose levels in the normal range. The second manifestation of GSD-1A is hepatomegaly. Normally, glycogen stored in the liver maintains blood glucose for 3 to 4 hours between meals, but GSD patients can't use their glycogen storage and therefore need a constant supply of glucose. This is like being able to put food in your cabinets but not being able to take it out for energy. Over time, the glycogen storage builds up in the liver, causing hepatomegaly. The MNT for hepatomegaly is managing blood glucose spikes to minimize glycogen storage in the liver. Patients are advised to consume foods low in the monosaccharides galactose and fructose. A low galactose diet involves low amounts of milk, yogurt, and cheese. And a low fructose diet involves low fruit, fruit juice, table sugar, pastries, syrups, jellies, honey, and candy. The monitoring and evaluation for an enlarged liver is checking its size through ultrasound and physical examination. GSD patients also cannot generate glucose from gluconeogenesis, causing a buildup of lactic acid in the blood. This results in lactic acidosis, which can cause damage to the nervous system, especially in the kidneys during its excretion, which can cause renal failure. Glycosade is a high amylopectin modified cornstarch that is slowly digested, allowing for a steady release of glucose into the bloodstream. It's most commonly taken at bedtime to reduce nocturnal feeds. Patients are advised to also supplement with calcium because of the restricted intake of milk and decreased activation of vitamin D in damaged liver and kidneys. Patients should also supplement with a multivitamin to support their limited diet. Lactic acid levels rise as glucose falls. Therefore, small frequent meals are essential. 
The monitoring and evaluation for lactic acidosis is measuring the amount of lactate in the blood, and as you can see, the amount in the blood from the veins and the arteries differ. The fourth manifestation of GSD is hyperlipidemia. Chronic hypoglycemia and chronic low insulin levels trigger the mobilization of triglycerides for use in gluconeogenesis. However, these patients don't have the enzyme required to break it down and triglycerides stay in the blood, resulting in hyperlipidemia. Because patients cannot convert fat to glucose via the liver, patients should consume a moderate to low fat diet to help manage high blood lipid levels. 20 to 25% of their daily calories should be from fat with a focus on less than 7% of fat from saturated sources. The monitoring and evaluation for hyperlipidemia is checking the patient's lipid panel for normal ranges. Hyperuricemia is caused by a combination of an increase in the generation and a decrease in the excretion of uric acid. Although hyperuricemia can be asymptomatic for years, it causes kidney, joint damage, and gout over time. Patients should avoid a high-protein diet to prevent excess uric acid buildup in the bloodstream. If severe hypouricemia persists, allopurinol will lower uric acid to normal levels. Allopurinol is a synthetic drug that inhibits uric acid formation in the body. Monitoring and evaluation for this manifestation is measuring the serum uric acid for normal levels. In summary, GSD is a term describing a cluster of diseases involving a dysfunction in one or more of the enzymes that regulate the metabolism of glycogen. GSD1A is the most common and involves the deficiency of the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme, meaning patients can store glycogen but cannot access it for energy between meals. The main medical nutrition therapy for these patients is the frequent consumption of high doses of raw cornstarch, which slows gastric emptying and absorption. The goal is to provide a constant stream of glucose into the blood without spiking levels to the point of triggering glycogen storage. Without close monitoring of the diet, low blood sugars can be fatal, and excess blood sugar can cause further liver enlargement. Complications of GSD include hypertension, liver tumors, kidney disease, and osteoporosis. Life expectancy is slightly reduced, although with proper nutrition therapy, GSPD patients can do quite well.